members of the body of Christ, and he says you shall be saved from it, not out of it. You hadn't been appointed unto the wrath of God. And the wrath of God will fall on this world. One day, He's going to stop speaking in grace. And He's going to remove His ambassadors, His representatives on this earth with the gospel of Christ, the good news of grace. And then He's going to speak to this world in wrath. I hope nobody's here for that day of wrath. I hope nobody that's listening to me right now, whether it be over the Facebook, whether it's over right in this building or wherever, will miss the opportunity to be saved in the day of grace. God today has given this world an opportunity for His salvation and grace. Even the lost, even the sinners out here that do not know God, that mock God, that mock Jesus Christ, is enjoying the grace of God, and they don't even know it. Every day you live, the air that you breathe, every time your heart pumps blood through your body, that's by the grace of God. The Bible says that Jesus Christ is, he is the only one that hath immortality. He's the only one that has life. Do you know where your life comes out today? Can you imagine if God withdrew the spirit of life from this world, you'd drop dead right now, and, and, and if you wouldn't say it, you'd be in hell. This world is enjoying the spirit of life. You remember when the Lord told Noah, He said, My spirit shall not always strive with man. He's not talking about the Holy Spirit. He's talking about the spirit of life. God breathed into Adam the breath of life, that spirit of life, and man became a living soul. Your life, Paul put it like this in Acts 17, in Him we live and move and have our being. In Him we exist on His planet, His creation, breathing His air, enjoying His sunshine. And yet the world hates Him. What's going on in the world today is a direct hatred toward God Almighty. You mark her down. The day of the Lord's coming. Now look what he says in verse 4. But ye. He changes from they to ye. Brethren are not in darkness that that day, the day of the Lord, should overtake you as a thief. And in verse 5 he mentions another day. He said, Ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. That night and that darkness would be the day of the Lord. We are our children of the light. God called the light day. But the day of the Lord is a time of darkness. I think Kevin mentioned, talked about, and when he preached a few weeks ago about the day of the Lord, how it was a day of gloominess, darkness. Now I want you to look at verse 5. You're the children of light. Well, what is light? 
Well, I want you to see, first of all, turn back to Daniel. Hang on to Thessalonians and look in Daniel. And notice in Daniel chapter, I'm going to just go in verse tw chapter 12. There will be light during, in that day of darkness. But it ain't the light that you know of. Verse, look down in verse 3, chapter 12, verse 3. Just to uh, where we at, look in verse 1. And at that time shall Michael stand up the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. And there uh, shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. Now come down to verse 3. And they that be wise, wise, a wise man has knowledge, he's like a teacher, and they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. And they that turn many, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. But thou, O Daniel, in other words, verse 3 has to do with in the tribulation, there's going to be some teachers, some wise men that has the knowledge. But he tells Daniel, he said, But Daniel, old Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. And I believe the knowledge that shall be increased, I believe it's the increase of the prophecy of this book. In other words, they got to be like teachers of this book. And it's sealed until the time of the end. Well, when the end gets here, it's going to be unsealed, and there's going to be some wise men that's going to teach this book to some people. Look in chapter 11. In chapter 11, notice in verse 32. <clears throat> And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries, the Antichrist. But the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. There's going to be some in the nation of Israel that's going to know the Lord. And they that understand among the people shall instruct many. They go, those that have that wisdom... That knowledge of this book is going to instruct many and they're going to have light. Yet they shall fall by the sword, by the famine, a flame, by captivity, and by spoil many days. Come down to verse 35. Uh, and some of them of understanding shall fall to try them to purge, to make them white, even to the time of the end, because it is yet for a time appointed. In other words, folk, that's the light. The book sealed unto the time of the end, but there's going to be some people that's going to come on the scene during the tribulation, and they're going to have the light of prophecy, and they're going to understand what's going on in Daniel, and they'll understand the book of Revelation, and they'll begin to tell people about it, the nation Israel. Now, if John the Baptist come on the scene, am I right or wrong? He come on the scene, Why? To prepare the people for the Lord. You understand? So John the Baptist began to preach before Jesus Christ was revealed. Turn with me to John and look in John chapter 1. John chapter 1. 
And the reason why I'm doing this, folks, you're not in them times of prophecy. God is not fulfilling prophecy today. He's not judging this world. If God judged this world, this world would be in, I mean, brother, let me tell you, He's going to shake it like you take that flyer there and shake it till the leaves fell off of it. It's going to be a time of trouble. It's going to be a time of pestilence, famine. It's going to be a time of chaos like you've never seen before. We get upset about mass. We get upset about this and that, about the, what we, uh, goes on today. It's nothing like what's going to be when that bottomless pit opens up and those locusts come out of there with stingers and they're stinging and tormenting men. And it's nothing like when there's earthquakes that makes the mountains go flat. I want you to understand, this world is going to rock and reel and God Almighty is going to destroy it. It ain't going to be no pretty sight. It's not like the left behind books that you read about. And I read them. And it was entertaining. I thought they was pretty good. If you read them like you watch a movie. And I'd read them and I'd think, boy, you know, because they thought, we're going to endure it's not like the movie, the 4th of July, or whatever, them aliens come down and begin to destroy and everything, or Independence Day, or whatever it was. It's not like that movie. We will overcome. No, they won't. You're listening. I talked, uh, there was a man on television talking about how he built structures that will withstood, uh, withstand earthquakes, tornadoes, hurricanes, nothing would make it sink. And I thought, that's what they said about the Titanic. On their first voyage, what happened to it? It went down. Let me tell you something. The creator of this world, this earth, God Almighty, Jesus Christ, He's got things that man knows nothing about. And there ain't no structure that can be built that God Almighty can't flatten. Now look with me in John. In John, notice what he said. I want you to uh, notice in John chapter 1, verse 9. Well, let's come back to verse uh, 7. The same came for a witness. He's talking about John. Verse 6, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Uh, notice on down in the, uh, the passage, you'll find, turn over to John chapter 3. In John chapter 3, notice verse 19. John three nineteen, And this is the condemnation that light is coming to the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds are evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. Neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. And there's a witness of the light. Jesus Christ is the light. He said, as long as I'm in the world, I'm the light of the world. This light has to do with the kingdom. This light has to do with prophecy. John the Baptist witness of the he was a prophet, and no and notice something about John. Look back in uh, chapter Matthew, in Matthew, <clears throat> uh, I believe it's in chapter eleven. In Matthew chapter eleven, notice what he says in Matthew eleven, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, 
Verse 7, And as they departed, Jesus began to say to the multitudes concerning John, What went ye out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken with the wind? But what went ye out for to see? A man clothed in soft raiment? Behold, they that wear soft clothing are in king's houses. But what went ye out for to see? A prophet? Yea, I say unto you, and more than a prophet. For this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. Verily I say unto you, Among them that are born of women, there have not risen a greater than John the Baptist, notwithstanding he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. And you got to think about that. But anyway, he said, There has not risen a greater than John the Baptist. He's a prophet. John the Baptist comes on the scene and he witnesses but to prepare and make ready a people for the Lord. He's a witness. He's a prophet. Jesus Christ later comes on the scene, six months later, and is baptized by John and to make him manifest to Israel. All I want you to see is there's light there. There's light here to the nation Israel. It's a light about the kingdom. It's a light fulfilling prophecy. That light is not shining today. There's a different light shining today. But notice something else about that light. Turn back to Matthew and look at, well, you're in Matthew, look in chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. And we can make applications out of the Scriptures. Matthew 5, 18. Notice what he says there. In verse, uh, not 18, verse, uh, let's see, verse 14. He says, ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Folks, he's talking about light, letting their light shine. They will let it shine during this time period, Jesus Christ said he was the light, and he says ye are the light to his twelve. These twelve, he goes to the cross, and as though, uh, what did they do? The twelve come here, and they're the light to the nation Israel. But what happened to them? They rejected the message of salvation through the twelve. They rejected Jesus Christ, crucified him, and the Bible said that Israel is blinded today. You know where they're at? They're in darkness. No light coming out of Israel. No rise of the nation Israel. Isaiah said the Gentiles should come unto thy light and the brightness of thy rising. They're not rose nothing today. There's no light from God shining through Israel today. That light is a light of prophecy and is concerning a kingdom. And it's a kingdom that will be on this earth. And that's all it is about. That kingdom has a throne and Jesus Christ will sit upon the throne. It also has 12 thrones, and the 12 is going to sit upon 12 thrones. And it also has to do with land that was promised to the, uh, Abraham and to his seed. And the seed is Christ. So well, what's that got to do with anything? It don't have anything to do with anything about you. 
The problem is, we the preaching today is taking all of the doctrine and the Word of God from the nation Israel, and they're trying to apply it to you today, and it won't work. You'll never, I mean, we was talking about out there. I believe it was Brother Dennis and, and Alan. I've never heard Second Chronicles seven fourteen quoted as much as I've heard it quoted in the past month. Every time I listen to a preacher, he goes and quotes that verse. You know what that verse says? Let's turn there. I mean, see if you've heard it. Now, Chronicles is in the front of your Bible. Second Chronicles 14. See if you've heard this verse quoted. If my people well, now that ought to just, you ought to stop right there and say, hmm, who, who's his people? Who's God's people? Israel. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. And folks, that's not a promise to you as a member of the body of Christ. We, there's nothing wrong in heal, uh, humbling yourselves. Certainly not. There's nothing wrong in praying. Certainly not. But it's not to get your land healed. You don't have no land. You don't have it even if you got a deed to it. You're just paying rent on it. Ever watch your taxes on that land, that's what your rent is. And stop paying your taxes and see who owns that land. And if the Lord don't come back, you know, I was listening today, you know, we're about $30 trillion in debt. in this country. Do you know how much base money is in this country? In the base money in the war I mean to cover everything? Four point five trillion. Where's all that other money gonna come to? Folks, I'm telling you and I've said this for years, and some of you will know I've said it. If the United States is not the beast that the Antichrist will over, the United States is going to crumble and fall. Because whatever country that he's over, he, that's the country that he will take up and he'll swallow three other countries and he'll be a world ruler. We're going down. And God ain't going to do nothing. You can't change what is going to happen. There's a time of Jacob's trouble come. And it's coming fast. So what are we to do? Well, we're lights. Turn with me to Philippians. Now back in Thessalonians, I'm going to read that verse again. In verse 5, he says, Ye are the children of light. Just as these two witnesses and back here, John the Baptist, Jesus Christ, come on the scene, was the light. John was... Preparing people for him. In the future out here, there's going to be a man. 
And by the way, just let me read it to you. Turn Before we read in uh, Philippians, go back to Malachi. Uh, you'll go to Matthew, then it'll be uh, Malachi. And look in Malachi, uh, and notice in chapter 3. Malachi chapter 3. Verse 1, Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me. That was John the Baptist. But Elijah's going to come. And the Lord whom ye seek shall suddenly come to his temple. That would be the second coming of Christ there. That's what they was expecting. And he did come into that temple. He came into it a couple times. One time he was riding on a, a, a mule. And he was coming in there and they were throwing down stuff. And they said, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. And he said, he, they were calling him Hosanna, King. They should have known. He said, even the messenger of the covenant whom ye delight in. Behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hope. Come down, uh, look over in chapter 4. In chapter 4. Notice in verse... Uh, Verse 2, But unto you that fear my name shall the Son, S-U-N, of righteous arise with healing in his wing. Second coming. But before the hand he will tread down the wicked. The Antichrist. Uh, come down to verse 4. Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded unto him in Horeb, uh, for all Israel, with the statutes and judgments. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Now notice something. I turn to Matthew back in Matthew and go to Matthew 17. Matthew 17. In Matthew chapter 17 and notice they're up on the mount. Who's with him? Notice in Matthew 17 verse 1. And after six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bringeth them up into a high mountain apart, and was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun, sun of righteousness, and his raiment was white as the light. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses, as in Malachi 4, the law, and Elias, Elijah, having to do with the prophets, the law and the prophets, talking with him. Well, folks, they're talking about his decease that he's going to do. Luke said they're talking about his decease. Well, why was this so fun? Look back in verse 27. Uh, verse 27, For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels. Then he shall reward every man according to his works. Verily I say unto you, there be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Folks, that's what he meant. Then he takes them up there after six days. Uh, a day with the Lord is a, six, uh, a thousand years. A thousand years is one day. Folks, after six days, he takes them up there. They're up there on the mount. They see Moses and Elijah. Turn with me to a Revelation and look in Revelation chapter 11. Revelation chapter 11. In Revelation chapter 11, and notice what he said in verse 3. Revelation chapter 11, verse 3. And I will give power unto my, what? Now who you reckon they are? Huh? He said, I will give power unto my two witnesses. Well, there ain't no doubt who I think they are. I believe they're Moses and Elijah. I believe they represent the law and the prophets. I believe they're the two witnesses. Look what he said. And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and threescore days clothed in sackcloth. 
That's 1260 days, three and a half years. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. And do you know something? Nobody knew where their bodies was buried. Nobody knew where the Moses' body was. Do you know what Satan disputed over Michael with? It was over Moses' body. Now, people say, well, that could have been the body of the believers in Moses' time. Could have been. But I believe it has to do with his body. And Elijah was what? Taken up in a whirlwind. The chariot of fire. And they stand before God day and night, folks. I know where they're at. He said, look, these are the two olive trees. That would be in Zechariah 4.1. These two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before uh, the God of the earth. And if any man will hurt them, fire uh, proceedeth out of their mouth and devoureth their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. How did Elijah kill? You remember the 50 that came to Elijah and said, Thou man of God, the king comes. And he said, If I be a man of God, let fire come down out of heaven and consume you and ye 50 men. And fire came down and consumed them. Another captain, he sends another captain with 50 men. And the same thing happens. Fire comes down, consumes them. The king sends another captain with 50 men. And you know what that man does? He gets down on his knees. And he prays for his life and the life of his 50 men. And you know what the Bible said? The angel of the Lord said to Elijah, right in his ear. They couldn't see him, but Elijah heard him. Be not afraid of them. Go with them. If any man, if they hurt them, fire, power. But notice, he said, These have power to shut up heaven that it rain not in the days of their prophecy. How long did Elijah shut up the heavens that it rain not? Remember Ahab? Three and a half years, was it not? And have power over the waters to turn them to blood, to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. Who did that? Who turned the water into blood and caused pestilence and smited the earth with all loc- and all frogs and flies and everything like that? Moses did. These are the two witnesses. They have a message. You know what I believe they're preaching? I believe they're going to be preaching the same thing that John the Baptist preached. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. And their witnesses, uh, they have light of the prophecy. Daniel will be opened. Then there's followers. There's 144,000 of Israel 12,000 out of each tribe. Folks, they have their lineage. They're called virgins. They're called pure lineage from that tribe. And they're buried among the nations. And nobody knows where they're at. Because if Satan knew where they was at, he would corrupt their inheritance and their lineage. He don't even know. Why would he do that? Same way he tried to stop the seed in Christ's day when he killed those little baby boys from two years old and back. Had Herod to kill them. And folks, he would try to kill them. That's why the nations and the races is corrupt. Look on. The 144,000 his witnesses. Now turn back with me to Philippians, where we was going. In Philippians, notice in chapter 3. And I'll probably give you a wrong reference. I did. Chapter 2. In 
in verse 12. Philippians 2, 12, Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. You work it out. It's not working for your salvation. It's working because you are saved. You work it out. You get it out. For it is God. Notice what he said in verse 13. For it is God which worketh in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. God would have the members of the body of Christ. We shine. We would have us to work out our salvation. Why? He wants the world to see what His grace has done to people. But people, they don't want to share it. They're ashamed to say, I'm saved by the grace of God. They're ashamed to try to get the gospel out. I want to say this right now. You're either being conformed to this world or you're being transformed by the renewing of your mind. There is no middle ground. You understand? You're either being conformed to this world and the things in this world, or you're being transformed by the renewing of your mind by the Spirit of God. One of the two, there ain't no neutral. He says here in verse 14, Do all things without murmuring and disputing that ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation. That nation would have been Israel, but you could put the United States there too if you wanted to. Because let me tell you something, we live in a crooked and perverse nation today, and you can bet your booties the politicians is not going to do nothing but tell you lie after lie. My daddy said this, and I believed it. I didn't know nothing about it when he's saying it. And I just thought, ah, you know, pop people. He said a politician has two goals. One is to get elected, and the other one is to stay elected. And he'll lie, cheat, and steal to accomplish those goals. You can't trust this world. You can't trust this government. You can't trust, I don't care what party it is, you can't trust it. But you can trust this book. We live in a day that the Lord don't come. We might be in houses to worship our Savior. They already tell you, when to open the doors and when you can't. They already tell you your rights is being taken away. You don't have the right of free speech in this country anymore. They want to take your guns away. That's a common. You don't have the free speech. You go out and you start talking and saying the wrong things and see. Say, well, let... You're awful negative. Well, when I'm talking about negative things, I am negative. It should stir you up, folks. We have the light of the Lord, and yet the body of Christ sits back and does nothing. Well, what can we do? You can get out and vote. Well, who are you going to vote for? Well, don't vote for that liberal crowd. Socialist, communist. So, well, you can't tell me. I just did. We're at a crossroads. 
You think they won't shut the doors of assemblies? You think they wouldn't try to take this King James Bible? You know one of the things that they're after today is Christianity. This world hates the light because their deeds are evil. Isaiah 42 said that they call evil good and good evil. There's ever been a time, and I, I, I sometimes shudder, I think about that verse where Luke says, during the tribulation men's hearts is going to fail them for fear of looking upon those things that's coming upon this world. Folks, I can even believe that. One of these days that debt's coming due. One of these days it's going to... I'm 68 years old. Thank God for it, considering the alternative. Me and June will try to hover down and stay in our little spot, but I don't worry so much about us, but I do my grandchildren and their children. What are they going to face? In the future, we're at a crossroads when a minorities, a little group, and it ain't got nothing to do with race, it's about destroying the foundations that this country was built on. It's about destroying the home. It's about destroying the church. If the Lord don't come back, you watch it and you mark her down. You say, oh, Brian said it. This book right here will be classified as a hate book because it goes against everything that they stand for. I'm glad I'm saved. Do you know something? They can close the structures, but they can't do nothing to the real church the body of Christ. We're lights. Look in, uh, back in Philippians again, and I'm going to close. Philippians, where we was at in chapter 2. That ye may be bl uh, blameless and harmless to sons of God without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation among whom ye shine as lights in the world, holding forth the word of life, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. Now folks, we're the light. We shine as lights. Look at this light. Turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. You know, I was looking at some material where their agenda is to defund the police. They made some demands. They want them defunded. They don't believe in Christianity. That's lawlessness. And that's where we're headed. It's setting up for, they want to put a microchip in people. And it's all for the children. And in, the, in the vaccine. Say, well, you going to take it? Well, no, I ain't going to take it. So you think, is no, I just, I don't take vaccines. I 
I can. If it's a live one, I know I can't because I don't have the immune system. They won't give me a live vaccine. So, well, what if it's a dead one? Well, if it's dead, it ain't going to do no good anyway. It's dead. That shows you what I know. Would you take it? That's something to think about. Say, well, what if it's the mark of the beast? I don't care about the mark of the beast, folks. I believe in eternal security. I'm going to heaven. When the rapture happens, I'm gone. I'm out of here. Whether I got three or four marks of the beast on me, I'm out of here. The flesh is just going to go back. The flesh is nothing. God ain't worried about my flesh. I'm going to be changed. But I, my problem with a vaccine is that I've got a weak immune system and I don't want to take something that might give it to me. Yeah, Second Corinthians chapter 4. Probably get in trouble saying that. And you, she can't bleep it out. It's done gone. Look what God said in verse 5. For we preach not ourselves. We don't brag about ourselves and what we've accomplished in our salvation. We don't brag about, oh, we go to church. Oh, I was baptized. I was this. I... We don't preach ourselves. But Christ Jesus the Lord and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Now watch it, but we have this treasure, this salvation, this light that was given to the Lord. We have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Folks, you have a treasure that your salvation is a treasure and you're to work it out and you're to be a light amongst this world that we're living in to give light. And the last thing... Why are you there in 2 Corinthians chapter, turn over to chapter 11. There's a false light. And it's called the mystery of iniquity. Notice this thing here in verse 13. 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 13. If you go back in the context you'll find that they're being corrupted by Satan, their minds, in verses 3 and 4, by preaching another Jesus and offering another spirit and another gospel. Now this is the context. It has to do with the gospel. It has to do with that treasure that you have in earthen vessels. Verse 13 says, For such are false apostles. They preach another Jesus. They preach a Jesus of the kingdom. They follow the Lord after the flesh. And Paul said, we don't follow Christ after the flesh. They preach another gospel, and it's a gospel of works. And they offer another spirit, and it's not the Holy Spirit. He said, for such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. That's the false light. He's the God of this world. If our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world had blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ should shine unto them. You as an ambassador, you are a light of the Lord, and you are the children of light. You are the day. That day is the day of salvation. It's the day of grace. 
place that we're living in right now. And the church, the body of truth, uh, the church, the body of Christ is the only way God can manifest himself to this world. In the dispensation of grace, but over here and over there, he'll manifest his wrath to this world. And you know what's going to happen when he does that? They're going to hide themselves from the face of him that sitteth in the heavens. And they're going to get in caves and run to rocks to try to hide when he manifests his wrath. Aren't you glad you're saved today? And you're the light of the Lord. Then you ought to get out. You ought to live. Don't be transformed by this world, but be ye transformed. Formed by this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable will of God. You find that in Romans 12, 1 and 2. I thank you for being here. Come back next week. Fist bump, elbow bump, nod your head. We still in that mode. I don't know when the it's going to end. Uh, but anyway, just go on. We'll preach another sermon here. <laughs>